and welcome to the Scar Night Magazine vodcast. Now we've been having a fair bit of chilly weather here in the UK lately, so we thought in this episode we'd look at some of the ways that you can prepare yourself for observing under cold conditions, and also the warm weather clothing that we wear when we're observing. Now joining me is Steve Marsh, art editor of Scart Night Magazine. Steve, I think it's fair to say that when we're imaging and observing we spend most of the time pretty much standing still or sitting still mm -hmm. and that requires us to have some pretty warm clothing to prepare ourselves for those conditions. What would you say is one of the most important pieces of clothing that you wear when out observing? Well I think you want to keep all your extremities warm really. Um, so uh, probably the part that's going to feel the cold first is going to be your feet. Yeah. Um, now I use these, before I use these I used um, walking boots um, but these are specifically made for cold weather. People use them in camping a lot and um, they're extremely durable, really easy to slip on and off and um, they're waterproof as well. Having a really warm pair of walking boot socks, that's crucial as well because that will keep your feet really warm and I oft often find that actually if your feet get cold then that's end game, there's, there's no coming back from that. So keeping your feet warm is absolutely crucial. And a good trick of course is to um, make balls with your toes all the time whilst yeah, you're sitting absolutely. there motionless. I often find that if I can leave the telescope whilst it's imaging and maybe go for a walk or keep warm or keep myself moving in some way, that helps as well. Absolutely, yeah. Moving up the body then, um, one of the things that I like to wear when observing are a really tough waterproof pair of ski trousers because they're inherently warm in themselves and they also allow you to move around uh, and keep quite warm. Underneath all of this I have a thermal base layer so that keeps close to your skin, it wicks any sweat away from uh, your skin so you don't get chilled that way and of course on top of that a nice warm fleece. I sort of favour quite thick fleeces, um, such as this one, mm. which has uh, got quite a sort of um, furry lining. And so the important thing for me is mobility, because um, at the early stages of the night when you're polar aligning and you're setting up your tripod, um, you know, the most important thing is that you can, you can move freely. So I tend to sort of put on more layers as the night goes on. After I've done my polar aligning, I might then put on my waterproof layers. So it's all about mobility to start off with. Now in the past I've had problems with gloves because you find yourself using very thin gloves to try and uh, adjust screws and you really can't do it so you end up taking the glove off and then trying to adjust focuser or maybe screwing in a tripod leg and in the end your hands get cold and it's useless having gloves in the first place. So how have you got around that Steve? Yeah exactly, you don't have a really thick pair of gloves. Um, I found a really good pair of thin, uh, thin gloves which have got fold over mitts and the great things about these is that they're windproof. Um, now at first you may think you know what use is windproof gloves to an astronomer because we're not going to go out practicing astronomy when it's really windy but of course if they don't let the wind in they won't let the heat out so they're exceptionally good and you'll really feel the benefit of this later on in the night when your fingers are nice and toasty warm in the top. Now on top of all of this a really good warm waterproof jacket is an absolute must because that will finish the whole outfit off and make sure that you're really toasty and warm throughout the night. Now another thing I think is really important for keeping warm even on those nights when you think well actually there's not much of a breeze about a balaclava can be really useful because it might not seem like there's a breeze about but actually it'll keep your cheeks and the back of your neck really warm. Steve have you got any other tips? Well as well as a balaclava you should really try and have a good scarf to hand. There are a lot of different types of scarves, there are elasticated neck warmers but um, now the great thing about a scarf like this, the one that I use, is um, I found with a lot of scarves and hats and things they can be quite itchy. Now this one is anti-allergenic so you won't itch your way through the night which is really important when you're handling really delicate equipment. And of course, to finish it off, a really good hat to keep you warm, and I love my hat, this is my hat, keeps my ears warm, and it's been an absolute saviour on those really, really cold nights. So those are uh, basically our pieces of advice for keeping warm during cold weather. Earlier this morning, we put out a tweet asking you for your tips, and actually we got some really good responses. John DH on Twitter says, take a big flask of hot chocolate, as the fact it doesn't have any caffeine and it keeps your hands steady, which is a good tip, I hadn't really thought about that. And you can also warm your hands on the flask. Absolutely. Well Absolutely. Paul Abel on Twitter says, make sure your telescope is the same temperature as outdoors before you use it. A warm telescope is a duff telescope. Of course, great advice there, Paul. The tube currents inside a warm telescope can really make the view wobble really important if you're imaging or looking at the moon or the planets or something like that. And finally, Richard Cooper says, if you're a DSLR user and trying to shoot astro time lapse in the winter, a lens heater will keep dew and frost at bay. Well that's great advice guys, thanks for sending in your suggestions. And of course if you out there have any tips on how to keep warm while stargazing, do let us know. You can contact us at inbox at skyatnightmagazine.com. Well, that's it from Steve and I. Clear skies, and we'll see you again next time.